Welcome to the Savvy Spirit Podcast. I'm Sharon Moore, your host and creator of the Savvy Spirit Entrepreneur Program. This podcast features conscious women entrepreneurs whose businesses are built on their unique gifts and are making the world a better place. You're going to learn about their journeys, their courage, their resilience, and their truth. So enjoy the show, feel the love, and get inspired. All right, welcome back, everybody. So today, we are spending time with Carrie Ann Aldridge and Jenny Pierce, two sisters who have single-handedly changed the lives of hundreds of women in San Francisco. How? Well, they're the owners of Sheila Kelly S. Factor in San Francisco, and this is a place where through the movement of the feminine, women go to discover that centered, confident, and fiercely beautiful woman inside of them. The movement of the feminine was pioneered by Sheila Kelly, and I'm actually going to read this word for word because it it literally gives me chills every time I read it. At S Factor, you'll learn the ancient language of the feminine body with lights down low, no mirrors, no judgment. You'll meet a uniquely supportive tribe of soulfully sexy sisters as you dance, twirl, strengthen, and stretch your way through the most sensual movement practice there is. S-Factor is also a way of life. This is a practice that heals our relationship with our erotic body and in turn begins to heal our erotic body's relationship with society. Through this work, we turn on the brilliant feminine essence that exists in each and every one of us. We celebrate it. We revel in it. And as we see it in ourselves and each other, we bring that light into every relationship we have to the world around us and to the world at large. Ugh. Literally every time I read that, I just need a second to let it land. I mean, it's this thing of going from our bodies to our femininity, then to our erotica, then to our connection with each other, and then to society and ultimately to the world at large, which I find such a profound way to break the illusion of separation. So, Carrie Ann and Jenny, I'm going to stop. I want to hear from you guys. Welcome to the show. Thank Thank you. you. (laughs) Thank you for that beautiful introduction. I know. That was so beautiful what you said. (laughs) I told you I'm already just totally smitten with S Factor. I, I, I can't. It's so powerful. And I think we should just start with maybe a big level introduction to what is it? Who is Sheila Kelly? What is the S Factor? So, um, Sheila Kelly, uh, was an actress or she still is an actress actually. Um, and she about 17 years ago now, oh my gosh, she, um, (laughs) was, uh, acting and I think she helped produce it, um, a film called dancing at the blue iguana where she played an exotic dancer Mm -hmm. and Sheila has been a dancer her whole life. She went to, um, college. She was a, you know, she was a ballerina. She went to college for dance. And so, you know, connect, she thought it was going to be, you know, relatively easy for her. (laughs) And so she went into some clubs because at the time there were no, um, studios that she could go to, to learn, you know, this erotic movement. So she went to some strip clubs and she wanted to learn from those women. And she, was so taken by how beautiful the movement was and how powerful it was and how, um, it, what was so powerful about it was how the women owned their sexuality and celebrated their sexuality and their feminine bodies through this movement. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Sheila, she started to see this developing sense of who her erotic body or who her erotic creature, as we call it in S factor is. And at first she thought that it would be, um, like she thought she knew what sexy was. And so she tried out like, you know, cute little skirt and like a little top that tied it, you know, in between the breasts and she felt awful in it. She did not feel sexy in it, but that's what she thought sexy was. And so, um, later on she started to kind of play around with different, you know, like different clothing options. She bought a pair of, you know, thigh high black boots. And there was something about that that triggered her to connect to her body in an entirely different way. And that's how she met her erotic creature, which is basically the um, emotionality of 
her uh, erotic body. And we all have an erotic creature. Mm -hmm. And what's very common in S factor is that who you think your erotic creature is, is probably not, not her. Wow. (laughs) Um, so yeah, so then Sheila, you know, Sheila started to move differently through, you know, her relationships changed, her relationship with her husband, um, Richard Schiff changed and her her girlfriends were like, what are you doing? Like they noticed this difference in her. And so she told them and they were like, teach me. So she started teaching women, um, out of her, uh, her house. And then she was invited to be on Oprah or no, Terry Hatcher, who was a friend of Sheila's at the time, um, went on Oprah and started talking about this and we, they like it blew up. And so mm-hmm. that was down in LA and Sheila opened a studio down in LA and then Sheila was on Oprah and it had the Oprah effect. And <laughs> here we are 17 years later and we're still doing this. And, you know, Sheila really is the pioneer of, um, what is now really pole fitness, but S factor is, is so much more than pole fitness. But when you see like any other, um, you know, pole fitness studios or anything like that. They really come from what this, this dynamic of, you know, Sheila taking this out into a world as a way to empower women, um, and become strong and feel sexy and, and turn, turn the stigma of pole dancing on its head. Well, and I, and I love the, you know, the thing that caught me was obviously this is life changing for the woman herself who's doing this, but then the relationship to society and the healing that we do to the world at large, just by doing this work ourselves. Mm-hmm. Wow. What, what was it for you guys that inspired you to do this work? Well, this is Carrie Ann and I was the one who brought it to Jenny. I was doing it first. Um, I actually had a girlfriend who had a bachelorette party, um, at, uh, S factor and she was a friend who did all sorts of different types of movement you know, she did Ariel, she was a dancer and this was a close friend of mine. And, and I was kind of like, what are we doing? Like, what? <laughs> like, wait a minute. What? <laughs> and, um, and I remember I was running late getting to the birthday or to the bachelorette party. And I walked in and it was totally like calm and the, there, you know, there were no mirrors in the studio and it was dark and like, I just walked in and I felt like I got goosebumps all over my body and I felt, Oh, this is something really different than what I thought it was going to be. And, and we went through the class and I, and I had a lot of fun doing it. And, um, at the end, my girlfriend demoed for us, um, you know, her guests in the bachelorette party. And, um, she was somebody who, um, was very embodied, but she was not connected to her sexuality. And she had gone to a therapist, um, to try to work that out because it was affecting her relationship with her now husband. And, um, S factor was the thing that she found that helped connect her to her erotic body in a really wholesome and healthy way. And so I remember she danced to, um, dirty Diana by Michael Jackson (laughs) (laughs) totally (laughs) and um I I, to this day this you know this for me was about 11 years ago and um to this day I get goosebumps and like my eyes well up thinking about it because I saw my friend move in a way where for the first time I saw her experience herself as beautiful as I saw her wow and I I was like, I don't know what this is. This is totally not what I thought it was, but I, I want this. And wow. so then I took an intro class and uh, I brought a friend with another friend with me to the intro class. And at the end of it, she turned to me and she goes, you know, you're going to teach this, right? And I said, oh, I know. <laughs> and then from <laughs> teaching to owning, how, how did that happen? Um, well, so, um, my sister Jenny, um, and I had kind of, I lived in LA at the time and Jenny was living in Northern California and we had kind of, at some point had this fantasy that we would have a studio together where she would teach yoga and there would be S factor. And, um, and, uh, yeah, it just, for whatever reason, I just knew that that was part of our journey. Um, and so eventually I moved back up here from LA and, uh, there was another studio that was, um, in the Marina at the time that was owned by Sheila Kelly S factor. And, um, I became, they asked me to become the studio director and I ended up becoming the studio director. And then, um, you know, eventually it turned into Sheila asking me if, if, you know, we wanted to open our own studio and 
it was completely, I was not expecting it. Um, except for the fact that I had written in my journal two months before that Jenny and I would end up owning, um, at least three S factor studios. (laughs) I I love that. I went to bed. (laughs) So, um, when she asked, you know, I was kind of like, Oh my gosh, like, well, let me talk to like my, let me talk to my support crew (laughs) and see what we can do. And, and then Jen, I'll let you, I'll let you talk now. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. You are now allowed to talk. Yeah, you, you are doing so, so well. <laughs> I know, so I'm going to like, just let you speak to your experience of me coming to you and being like, hey. Um, yeah, so I've uh, So you I've get always, this phone call from your sister. I know. I get, well, yeah, I get this phone call from my sister. And I was kind of in between. I, I had been teaching yoga and I was realizing like, I cannot make any money at this. I love yoga, but I can just like, I can just go to a yoga class, you know, but I, I taught yoga for about seven years. And before that, um, for about 20 years, I actually owned, um, a kitchen remodeling business with my mom. We were both ran a business together. So I've kind of worked on my own anyways. Like I've always been not always, but for the majority of my adulthood, I have been self-employed. Mm-hmm. And so nothing about, running my own business was scary to me. It was kind of like, this is just what you do in order to get what you want. You have to work for yourself. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's really hard to get what you want working for someone else. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I not, never really was a stumbling block for me. It was like, well, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. I I was just very open. And I was like, oh yeah. You know, at first we were thinking, oh, we could do S factor and yoga. And then no, it was just going to be S factor. And and that was it. And she called me and I'm like, yep, let's do it. All right. So, what do you next <laughs> file an LLC. Like probably the most complex part was, was picking a name for our LLC. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we just, everything just kind of starts to fall into place and you do the next right thing and you kind of just go at it one day at a time and you, you march through the steps to get your business going and you look for a place and you like, you just go through the motions. Yeah. And, um, I was just totally on board. And I actually, at that point had only done, well, no, I had done Sheila Kelly live. I had been, you know, I had done a little bit of S factor, but I was not a, like a regular student at all. So I, I knew the magic of it only because of what my sister had experienced and what she shared with me through that. And then when I had done, you know, I had been to a couple S factor parties and I had, I worked with Sheila over a weekend at one of her Sheila Kelly live. You did after we opened the studio. Oh, was it? Mm-hmm. Okay. See, I can't, here's the other I thing. I love sisters. I know. <laughs> She'll correct me. They'll I call think... you out. She's just going to call you out. I know. And this is what I do is two and a half years ago, I had a ruptured brain aneurysm. So I usually claim that there's some sort of brain damage and I forget stuff. (laughs) And then her little sister will be like, um, you actually forgot stuff way before your brain aneurysm. (laughs) My whole whole family is like, are you really going to pull the aneurysm card? Yes, I am. I was just thinking, God, I forget things all the time. What's my excuse? (laughs) <laughs> um, I know I just, that's the only difference is now I actually have a legitimate excuse. Do you guys, <laughs> I mean, it was really, honestly, it was like that before <laughs> <laughs> I, I got that sense. Um, Hey, do you guys have a sense? And I don't, I don't know how long your studio has been open in, in, in the city. Cause you guys own the one in, in San Francisco. Do you have a sense of how many women you've, you've impact? I mean, my sense is hundreds and thousands, if not tens of thousands, but I'm curious if you, if you really have kind of a tangible sense of, wow, we're impacting this many people. Certainly hundreds, you know, at our studio. Um, and then Sheila, like, but Sheila Kelly S factor has impacted thousands of women. We've been, you know, Sheila has been doing this for 17 years and, um, you know, she's been on Oprah and she's been on Ellen. Like she goes and she gets hired by Tony Robbins to, to go do special, um, S factor workshops for Tony Robbins special events with his platinum group. And so, and, and right now, uh, Netflix is, uh, they're filming a documentary on, um, it's called the, I think the working title is the women's empowerment documentary and they're following Sheila around and they just started filming it, um, at a couple of meetings ago where I was actually teaching at that meeting. Oh. Um, so yeah, so they're there, but you know, it's probably not going to come out for a couple of years, but that's, then they're also following, uh, mama Gina as well. That's awesome. I mean, mm-hmm. I watched the, the, you know, the YouTube that you guys sent me about Sheila Kelly and it's, 
today, you know, we can hear the word feminine and, and divine feminine and, and feminine essence. And, and it's almost, at least today for me, not as, as loaded of a word, but you know, when she started this, it was, that's, I like, you use the word pioneer. That's exactly what it feels like she was doing. And mm-hmm. we've gotten to a level today where that's, we have capacity to hear this right now. Yeah. Especially I think with, you know, the Me Too movement that's going on. I mean, women are rising right now. And this is really what S Factor is about. It's, you know, as Sheila would say, it's the fourth wave of, of feminism, mm-hmm. where we're, um, you know, not burning bras, but wearing ones that make us feel beautiful and feeling powerful in that, you know, in connecting to our feminine and, you know, every body um, has feminine and masculine energy, but it just, in our society, the masculine energy has been celebrated and lifted up for so long, but the feminine energy has not, um, and is often, you know, degraded, um, or, you know, like for example, it'll be used as an insult, you know, if you saw, call someone, you know, like, Oh, you throw like a girl or something like that. And now it's beginning to be like, that's right. I throw like a girl. I throw like a badass girl. Heck Yeah. <laughs> No, and I know in my own self, and, and, you know, we talked about this earlier, I'm in my mid forties and I know that my reaction to my own femininity and even my reaction to my relationship to being a girl, I mean, I internalized the less than of it in my childhood. And now to be in this, to be in this movement, it is so incredible. So amazing. I, I actually feel lucky to be a woman. That's how powerful this movement has been right now. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of time, a lot of, a lot of the past, uh, experience of, you know, not just being told that we're less than, but, you know, make sure you cross your legs. Nice girls do this. You know, you're not supposed to do that. You know, you shouldn't sleep with that many. Like all of that is all controlling the body of the feminine. Um, and so we start to push down natural urges that are, you know, are the wisdom of our bodies actually want to express because mm-hmm. that will bring us into our fullness. Mm-hmm. And so what S factor does is it creates a really safe, really safe space to be able to express that side of us that we've been told like is too much or is too sexy or is not sexy enough. Or, you know, all of that, that we get told from the very beginning, you know, when we're little and, you know, we're told to like, you know, oh, sit with your knees together and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But boys don't get told that. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, and, and we, and at S factor too, like we, we need masculine energy to be healthy and we love the masculine. It's just that the masculine has been celebrated, um, so much that we, we just want to allow the space for the women and the, the feminine energy to, to also be celebrated so that they're, they're equal. Mm-hmm. And I would even say, you, you've said it beautifully that, that we, everybody has feminine and masculine, including not just in female bodies, but male bodies as well. Oh, we, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to switch gears a little bit into my, my three pillars that I, that I talk to with all of my guests. And um, the first one is around uh, your unique gift, you know, because my belief is we all have unique gifts that we need to bring out to the world. And, um, and, and it's our destiny to do exactly that. So I'm curious, not so much what is your unique gift, but how you got the courage to bring that out to the world. I'm going to let Jenny, I'm going to defer to Jenny so that she has some, some time to talk. I tend to be super verbose, so I'm going <laughs> to <laughs> I'm aware of what that particular unique gift is. <laughs> it's not that I'm not interested in the unique gift. I just find that how you bring it, that courage, that step from identifying the gift and bringing it out is just so magical. And I love hearing about that. Yeah, no, um, I'm curious to hear it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting because I, I think I was recently asked this question, like, what is your unique gift? And I honestly, I felt like, I don't know how to answer this. Mm. And I, 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 I asked my husband, I'm like, I'm not really sure what my unique gift is. And he answered for me in a way that I thought, oh yeah, that is my gift. All right. I'll take that. Well, what is it? Now you got me curious. (laughs) He said that I have the gift of connecting people and making friends with strangers. Mm -hmm. He said, you can find the stranger in the room and make them feel comfortable and make them feel loved and make them feel important. And you can become lifelong friends with someone in five minutes. 
Um, he's like, most people have no idea how to do that, nor would they want to. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's totally true. I love people. I love connecting with people. I love making people feel loved and heard and wanted and seen. And that's a lot of what we do here at S factor is, you know, we have, you know, we have a chair sitter because she's a witness to the dancer and it's, there's, it's a lot of holding space for women. Um, the, the movement becomes very, uh, it becomes like a somatic therapy becomes, I'm not saying it's therapy. I'm just saying it is like a somatic therapy Mm -hmm. and that it is, um, very powerful way to, um, express yourself and to move energy through the body, move emotion through the body. And, um, to be, you have to feel safe in order for that to happen. Oh yeah. I think that that's a lot of what we cultivate here is a safe space and a respect for all the different personality types. And, um, it's why we have certain boundaries and rules around S factor. You know, there's no touching and there's no nudity. And even that being said, you know, you hug people all the time. It's not like you don't <laughs> hug each other when, you know, someone wants a but, hug, but, but not when we're dancing, but not when you're dancing, there's <laughs> right. no touching when you're dancing. Um, and so it allows for women to feel safe. And I think that my, my gift of, um, of being able, able to read people and to um, connect with them kind of intuitively around their emotions and hold space and to have whatever they're going through be okay. Um, I mean, I've had, I've had women who have come in and they're, they're going through something and they're pissed off and they, and they snap at me or they get short with me. And I'm just like, I do not take it personally. I give them all the space. And then I'm not, almost a hundred percent of the time I end up having a, a roundabout conversation with them on the other end. And they're just like, you know, they just melt because they feel so safe mm. in space and, and in my presence. And it's, that's, that would be my gift, I think. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And the world needs you to bring that gift, especially in the top, in the areas of femininity and, and safety. An expression of that. And what about things like universal support? So for me, another part of my philosophy is if we're actually doing the work that we're meant to be doing, the universe conspires to support us. Can you guys share some experiences where it was like, whoa, the universe has our back right now? I can think of, well, I already mentioned that like, you know, I had already journaled that we were going to own, you know, three S Factor Studios. We're not there yet, but, um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but, and then two months later, you know, we were, were offered totally randomly, um, you know, the opportunity to open our first studio. Um, and that's how it came about. I would say another situation, um, when we were looking for a space, um, and this is one of those situations where it had to get so uncomfortable that we had, like, we had to be pushed out, but we were renting a space from someone, um, and without going into it and to be gracious about it, um, it wasn't the right space for us Mm -hmm. to the point where we had to leave. Otherwise it would probably have killed our business. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, so (laughs) I was like, I was like, Jenny, like get on Craigslist. Like, uh, you know, I'm going to call a broker. You get on Craigslist and just start looking for places. Like we have to get out of here. So, and so she did. And now I'll let you take over. (laughs) It was (laughs) Once we went in, once it was like really clear, like kind of the craziness of our situation and how we really needed to to move. I mean, we had just signed a four year lease and we were like, oh, God, this is not going to work. And so we um, once we figured it was like, OK, boom, that's not going to work. What do we do next? OK, we got to find a new space. And I literally we. It well, we started, like, we, we started looking with the broker, which got us nowhere. And we, I ended up going on Craigslist and I think this was like the second, it was like the first or, it was second, like the first space or second space that we looked at. Mm-hmm. And I walked in and I got, and I almost like started panicking because I knew this was the space. And I was like, oh, we have to get in here like now, like let's sign the lease right today. Let's go. Let's make this happen. <laughs> like, wow. Meanwhile, you're still in contract for four years. Yeah, the people who we did, we ended up taking over their lease. Um, it was a the, the space that we're in now is a um, it was a, a 
an art gallery. Mm. And like, the funny thing was, is that I had said, okay, like I had written a list of these are the things that we're looking for in a space. Like the build out's going to be easy. It's going to be in a good neighborhood, like all these things. And it's going to be, and this is our budget. And anybody who knew anything about San Francisco real estate would have looked at me and been like, you're crazy. There's no way that's going to happen. And, um, and it did. And we walked into the space and the person showing it to us. I remember they were like walking in front of us and Jenny and I like silently kept like turning around and like mouthing, <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> like behind them. And then they turn and look at us and we try to play it cool. Play it cool. <laughs> we're cool. We're cool. <laughs> Yeah. Listen, I think you have some magical journal that um, I'd like you to write a couple <laughs> things in there for me. Like, um, I'd like to have an affordable house in San Francisco. Can you add that into your journal for me? I, I think that you probably have your own magical journal. <laughs> I don't know. Yours seems to be producing at an amazing rate. Um, but uh, but yeah, so then Jenny and I, re- you know, we let them know that we were interested. And by that evening, we had a copy of their lease you know, in our hands. Then we were looking over like, how are we going to get this set up? And then we got out and sent out an email to our students like, and surprise, we're moving in a month, (laughs) you know, like Mm -hmm. got the build out and it just, it, it, it all happened happened really, really fast. And, and, um, we were able to get out of our other lease. So it was, it all worked out. Not only that, I know as a business owner, moving locations, especially for people in San Francisco, you move a block away and that can have a huge impact on your business. Mm-hmm. So I can only imagine how scary that was to, to, it's kind of like you're between a rock and a hard place with that one. Yeah. Well, we, when we were sharing, cause it was a shared space where we were and it was in Noe Valley. And, um, I think we had like 60 students at that time. And then it was really a matter of maybe about six weeks before we hit a hundred students. Like it happened super, super fast. Yeah. All right. Universe wanted you to relocate. That's for, that's for damn sure. And and that's the thing too, is that we're the only S factor studio um, in Northern California. So we have students who come from the East Bay, from the South Bay, from Marin County, from Sonoma. We have have regular students who come multiple times a week from Sonoma. Yeah. One of our now teachers, she was a student and she came from Carmel every week for a while. Wow. I'm I'm like compelled to say congratulations. And obviously a big congratulations is, is, is appropriate. But I also just feel the enormity of Every single woman that goes through your studio is just like that, that what I read in the introduction, the ripple effect of a woman doing this work is so far beyond just her individual, you know, impact. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's like when you said, Sharon, about um, how many women have you impacted? It's really hard to put a number on it. It's like there's all of our students and then there's all the people who come to parties and then there's all the people who have have, you know, or, you know, in a partnership or a marriage with an S woman, or they're, you know, the children of S women, Mm -hmm. or the friends of S women who have all been impacted on in some, maybe just a small way, but Mm -hmm. at least it's, it's something that's impactful. It does ripple out. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know I have many friends who are, who go to your studio and I'm saying it out loud. I am going to make it happen even though it's, yeah. I'm doing it. I am doing it. We'll um, you after this call. Yeah. I'm, I'm seriously, you're going to get you into an intro next Tuesday at six. Okay. Done. Well, I'm flying out <laughs> of the country. <laughs> I happen to be on a plane next Tuesday at six, but when I get okay. back for sure. Um, okay. I want to talk about business. So it sounds like Jenny, you had no, there was, you know, for you it was like, all I've known is being self-employed, but I want to hear, you know, I find it so interesting. Yes, we are doing our spirit led work. Yes. The universe supports us. And suddenly we are business owners and that's got the strategical part of it, the tactical part of it, the leadership, the people management, the finance, the sales, the accounting, et cetera. Like, how have you guys navigated that, that bit of your world? Well, I think that you, you just have to, you, there's a point where you have to throw your hat over the wall, right? You throw your hat over the wall and you're like, God, I got to go get it now. How am I going to go get my hat? And so you, you just slow, you figure it out, you know, and you just have faith that the universe is going to, is going to have your back and, and that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If I don't know how to do something, I'm going to ask someone who does Mm -hmm. and get guidance that way. And so, um, you know, we have a really, like I, you know, I definitely was self-employed a lot, but I never like 
ran a business with employees before. Mm-hmm. I was self-employed. That was a very different thing. Like now I do payroll, you know, and I do all of our you know, tax stuff. And I do, it's a much, it's a much bigger thing now than it was for me in the past. Um, and you just go at it, you know, it's just, it's just like a trail of breadcrumbs. You just keep, okay, this is next. And then this, and then this, and oh, okay, I need to figure out how to run QuickBooks now so I can get all my accounting together. Who do I know who can help me figure that out? And then you just go at it one day at a time and you just start making it happen. And, and it, and if in doubt, like I think when I have gotten the most stuck is when I try and do it all myself. Mm. Um, and then when I start, um, farming stuff out and I start delegating is when real momentum starts to happen. Like when you can let go a little and delegate and like, we have a a wonderful front desk woman by the name of Larissa and she's amazing. And I saw her post something on Facebook or whatever, referring to that. She was in charge of social media media and a company that she worked for. And I was like, uh, come again. What? You should just, uh, oh, guess what? I want you to do now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for social media. Our social media. And she was like, yeah. And I'm like, great. Cause I don't know how to do that. <laughs> you know. So, so now she, I've got someone else who is and it. And it, this, it feels so expansive and it feels like such a relief to have like be able to hand that over to someone who has experience, knows how to do it, is making great strides and making it happen. And so, um, see people complain about millennials, but they're really good at that part. (laughs) Really good. Um, you, you know, one thing I wanted to, to kind of offer up here is you say, it's like, you know, we just, I know the universe, I know I can do it. I take it day by day, but I see this beautiful thing between the two of you, which is, it seems like, there is still a strategy. So that to me, I split up between strategy and tactical. And it seems like you guys have a vision, whether it's this, we have three um, sites in San Francisco or the Bay Area. It seems like you've got this combination of we know where we're headed and the day by day, we just take it day by day. But we still have that vision. We know where we're headed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we both are extremely passionate about the work that we do. And, so we're also very lucky that, you know, as sisters, we work as well together. I mean, there's so many times when, you know, when you go through owning your business can be really hard. And there's so many times I look at Jenny and I go, I'm so glad I'm doing this with you and not by myself. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I just, couldn't, I couldn't imagine doing it and try, trying to do something of this size by myself. And I know that people do, and I'm in awe of them because I just find it's way more fun to do it with my sister. And, uh, you know, I, I, I have uh, experience with a business partner. I've, I'm in a business partnership for 15 years and I know that it takes profound honesty and profound communication. And as hard as it is to do it alone, there's, there's a different hard or challenge, um, or reality to being in partnership that requires some courageous conversations. That's for sure. Yeah, I I firmly believe that if you can't have hard conversations, you have no no business owning your own business. (laughs) Yeah. Um, (laughs) Amen. Um, How do people find you guys? If somebody's listening and they're curious, they want to talk to you, they want to try a class, where do they go? Um, They can go to our website, which is www.sfactor.com. That's S as in Sam Factor, not X Factor, which is a lot of people make the mistake. (laughs) Um, And uh, choose the San Francisco location. But, you know, certainly take some time to look around on the website. And um, also, Sheila Kelly did a TEDx talk a couple years ago. It's called Let's Get Naked. And so you can go to YouTube and uh, see what I, I highly, highly suggest that anybody who wants to know more about what we do actually watch that TEDx talk with Sheila because it gives a lot of the philosophy behind S Factor. So besides being a movement practice, um, there is so much philosophy um, that that feeds into what we do. There is really no movement practice that that is like what we do. Um, it's, we're not just a workout, a place to go work out, you know? Um, and, and that philosophy guides, um, our, our teachers, you know, whether you're a teacher in San Francisco or LA or Orange County or New York, um, you know, we have really high standards and, and for our teachers and, um, 
Yeah, so I, I highly suggest that you watch Sheila's TEDx talk. And I'm going to also just... include that link. So I'll put the link to your okay. website on the episode notes, and I'll include the link to the TEDx, and I can vouch for that. I watched it. It is truly, truly amazing. Wow. Also, Sharon, you can all, you, anyone can just call the studio, too, and talk to, even, either leave a message if no one answers, an ambassador will call you back, but it's 415 440 6420 you mean like actual humans with a phone Human. that rings? Yeah, humans, we're yes. all about human contact here. <laughs> oh my God, amazing. I know, it's a little old fashioned, but like it cla- it's classic. It's kind of, what, exactly, <laughs> it's classic, real human to human. Um, contact doesn't go out of style. Exactly. So so just to before we wrap up here, I always love to open it up and, and offer an opportunity for my guests to just kind of share words of wisdom. You know, people might be listening and they're, they want to have the courage to step into their own business or maybe they're 15 years in and they're in a transitional time and realigning with their spirit, their business. You know, what, what sort of words of wisdom would you like to share with our listeners? One thing that I would say, and this is what we really, what really, the big teaching of S factor is, is that when you connect to, um, your feminine energy and you connect to, you know, you're, you are, um, consciously cultivating a feminine life, um, and you listen to the wisdom of your body, it'll change your life in ways that are completely unexpected. Um, so, you know, honor the wisdom of the feminine body because it's going to be different than, you know, your, the way that you might open your own business or the way that you might be in relationship or the way that you might, um, you know, look to make your dreams come true is going to be different if you do it in an embodied way, as opposed to just letting your brain spin and spin and spin and try to be the thing that, that takes care of you know, all of that for you. Um, there's a lot of wisdom in the body. I don't know if that probably sounds a little nebulous, but um, I'll, I'll balance it out. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it. Do what you love <laughs> and just, you don't have to do it all at once. Just take it one day at a time. Like that whole analogy of like, how do you eat, eat an elephant one bite at a time? It can seem really overwhelming to start your own business, but as long as you take action in that direction every day, it's amazing. And then there, there becomes this, um, oh, what's the word? Um, it's like a snowball effect, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's the compound effect. Like you just, a little, little actions in the same direction will completely change your trajectory of to where, where you're going. And then all of a sudden you'll be like, oh my God, I've started a business. I had no mm-hmm. idea it would be, it seems so big and ominous when you're, when you, um, look at it as a whole, but if you can just kind of chunk it down into small bites every day and just keep moving in that direction, you'll get there. Mm. And, and I just want to tack on which to kind of clarify what I'm saying is also when you're going through that, listen to your body and your body's responses to situations that come up and people you meet rather than, you know, listen to your intuition. You know, if you get a gut feeling, that's a bodily reaction telling you like, you know, yes or no, or whatever it is. Also, one of my favorite things is that if it's not a hell yes, don't do it. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> mm. You guys, I so see how you work together. It's it's quite something the dynamic that you guys have. And I I, I don't know if you want to reveal this. And I I have who's older? Who's the older sister in this Carrie. dynamic? Oh, I'm seven years older than <laughs> Carrie. I'm 47. Got it. Wow. I kind of thought Carrie Ann was the older one. <laughs> it's because I'm so mature. Oh, clearly <laughs> mature and wise. It, it is. I, I am definitely the bossier one. She's the bossier one. Well, <laughs> that being said, I'm the one who manages our teachers and I'm the one who manages yeah. our staff. And Jenny comes in and takes class and like, everyone's like, Jenny's so nice. And I'm like, I'm the one who has to like reprimand people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Did you hear Jenny's evil laugh in the background to that one? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I know that laugh. <laughs> All right. Well, you two, this was such a treat and I'm serious. I am so sold on, on, on going and, and doing this for myself and for the world at large, like, like you guys stand for. I, I really do believe it. And I'm looking forward to, to being somebody who gets to put this in my body and actually experience it and embody it. So thank you for doing this and for putting this out there in the world. Thank you so Sharon. much for having us, Sharon. We really appreciate the opportunity to, to come and talk about what we do and what we love. 
Awesome. And I'll see you. I'll see you on a Tuesday for an intro. Yeah, in two Tuesdays. Next, not next Tuesday, but the Tuesday after, right? Exactly. In two Tuesdays. All right. So I will close out with just my personal reflection, which is that I find it such an honor and such a privilege to be able to bring to you these caliber of women, amazing people doing their work in the world and making good things in this world. And I know this travels from your ears to your heart and ultimately into action and ultimately into making the world a better place. So with that, I will sign off and we'll see you next week. Thanks everyone for listening. I hope you feel inspired and connected and alive. And hey, if you enjoyed the show today, leave us a review. And if you want more, you can also find us online at thesavvyspirit.com or on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Okay, my friends, it is time to say goodbye. I wish you a good night, a good morning, a good day. Wherever you are on this earth, I wish you well. And I'll see you next week.